All right. Good afternoon and welcome to the show. We have a little kind of business advice for you now. Have you ever thought about starting your own business, maybe getting a storefront? The issue of commercial leases can be very, very tricky. So let's find out how to navigate that maze, shall we? Serene Chow is with me now, a real estate lawyer with Bouton Law. And Serene, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Simi. I had to ask you because you were here and we see this all the time and it comes up in the news. We'll get this out of the way very quickly. Uh, the issue of these medical marijuana shops, particularly in Vancouver, I have often wondered, how do they get leases? How, like, what, Why do building owners sign leases with, with these people? Well, actually, a lot of them really shouldn't because there's insurance issues right now. And also, it's up in the air with, with a lot of other issues other than just insurance. There are licenses. Different cities have different requirements. And for some odd reason, some of them are flying under the radar. And they're really yeah. doing uh, business... Uh, illegally actually yeah but landlords don't know that sometimes they just uh they think okay it's a good tenant they're paying the rent i will rent to this tenant but they should really consult a lawyer to see if this is a business they should take on in their unit yeah that's what i was wondering too like do they know what's going on do they really just care that at least the rent is being paid on time unfortunately a lot of them do all right well let's talk about commercial leases are they tough to navigate would you say i would say they are um the more difficult ones the ones that have more complex terms really should uh be done through leasing brokers um and sometimes with the assistance of a lawyer Okay, what are the most common pitfalls that people have or what mistakes do they make? I think in the beginning, because people think, well, uh, maybe I should hash out some key terms and I can do it myself. Oof. Well, sometimes that is the case, but more often than not, just having a leasing broker, being a little bit more familiar with the initial language, certain things to put into what we call the offer to lease or kind of a lease proposal. Talk about some of the key terms that should be both parties, the landlord and the tenant should hash out first. That might be a good start rather than just going into it blind. And what are those key terms? Like, what do you have to remember? Very beginning, right off the bat, you should figure out who you're renting from. Who's your landlord? Um, what space you're renting? Like, how big is it? Uh, where it is? And your rent, more importantly, right? How much you're paying per month and how long are you renting for? And that's kind of the very minimal basics to start you off. Right. I've heard all these kind of horror stories about people who the rent just gets jacked up right at the end of their lease. Are there no protections for uh, leasers, leasees when that happens? Unfortunately, because with commercial leasing, it's not as regulated as residential leasing. Ah. So in the beginning, when you start negotiating kind of what we call the lease proposal or the offer to lease, you should hash out those terms. So for an example, there should be a set rate for if you have a five-year lease or a three-year lease. So you know exactly how much you're paying per year. But isn't it kind of, when you're starting up a new business, you also obviously don't want to tie yourself down for a long period of time because you don't know how the business is going to go. Absolutely. So one of the things that actually a lot of the tenants will negotiate in the beginning is something called an option to renew so what, or an option to extend. So for an example, they say, well, I have a lease three years, I'm happy, or at least five years, I'm happy, but I want to have an option to extend it if business goes well. That should be something in the very beginning of the discussions. Okay, so far, so good. But I know there are some touchy topics on this as well. We're going to get into those when we come back. Well, we're talking about commercial leases. They can be tricky, whether you are on the negotiating end because you want to get a commercial lease or whether you are the landlord trying to negotiate with a potential tenant. Serene Chow is a real estate lawyer with Bouton Law who is helping us out with this. So we, we got the basic idea here, right? Things that we should be looking for. Yes. What are some of the touchy topics? Well, there's a good number of them, but okay. let's start talking about the ones I commonly see. Okay. So for an example, if you're going to uh, an existing space, you already have it, that's fine. But what if you're going in new? You might want to do some renovations. You want to have some uh, allowances for time so that you can have time to renovate and not have to pay rent. So people should talk about those things because it will take time for you to go in there and fix up the space so it's right for you. So it's a bit touchy, but you should still bring it up. Right. Maybe have some um, time that we call like maybe a rent-free period or something that gives you time to go in, use the space, but not pay rent for that time so to get it ready. Or in the alternative, you can actually get the landlord to kind of come halfway, maybe give you something called an allowance. So it's saying, give me credit or give me some money to put into my renovations for the space. Something we see a lot of. This sounds like a lot of work. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and a lot of things yeah. to think about before you sign. I'm sure a lot of people who do it, I just want to start my business. I just want to get going. Yeah, 
And I always say, well, you know what? Get a leasing broker, get some key terms down, and these are those things that you should really talk about. And then afterwards, once you got the key terms down, now then you have to review the lease. The hard right. work then goes to the lawyer that actually looks through the finer details of the lease. Okay. Now the landlord also has the right to relocate you? Yes. So sometimes people are afraid of that because they're saying, well, you know what? I'm using this particular space uh, and I want this particular unit because it's a certain level. So for an example, some people say, well, I'm paying a premium to be on the 40th floor. I want an ocean view or I want this view and they don't want to be relocated. So these are the things that sometimes we'll see in the lease and they should say, well, you know what? I don't want to be relocated. And then we can have that taken out of the lease. Okay. But people should know that sometimes these things are just standard in there. They do. So if this is the, this is kind of what we're saying, if you have a more uh, sophisticated helper, that's maybe a leasing broker or a lawyer to look at yeah. uh, the key terms in the beginning, then you can start off out of the bat and say, hey, you know what? This is something that my lawyer or my leasing broker brought up and I don't want it in there. Or maybe if I do get relocated, I get to have a say in where I'm going. Okay, and I always hear about places that have to close because the building's going to be torn down or the the building owner has decided That's to right. change things. Can they just do that even if you have a lease to stay in that building? Well, often they have those clauses within the lease, but it would give you a period of time, usually not much, three to six months notice, and then you have to move out so that they can um, renovate it or demolish it. So these are those things where when you look at the lease or when you look at it with the lawyer, those things should be brought to your attention and maybe have a little negotiation. Well, for an example, you might say, well, the, maybe the first four or five years of my lease, um, don't do that. Or so that you can have some expectation and some certainty as to how long you're in there for. When property values have become such as they have here in Metro Vancouver, yes. do these situations become more difficult? Because there probably are a lot of building owners out there who've decided, you know what, given what this building is worth now, you're not paying enough. Yeah, sometimes it is. But then they do have to, they can't just say, oh, I'm going to uh, demolish or renovate. They do have to give you some proof that that is what they're doing. Maybe some building permits, some plans. So it's not like they can just use that as an excuse to kick you out. It really has to be something that they're planning in the huh. works. And this is more common with the older buildings. And it's not necessarily within downtown core or anywhere. It's dependent on the building. The older buildings, they have more, uh, maybe there's more uh, possibility of demolishing it. Whereas the newer buildings, it's lesser of a concern. Right. Okay. Is there a particularly hot area right now that you could think of? Like, are people coming to you going, got to get into this? I really, like, because location is yeah. a big deal too, Absolutely. right? So you don't always have a choice if you just know you want to be on such a main street, for instance. Let's just right. use that. Everybody wants to be on main street these days. Uh, when it is in such high demand, I guess landlords can demand more concessions from someone. Absolutely. It's very unique to the location. So if it's a hotter location, they do have a bit more say. It's not even about whether they're allowed to demolish it or not, or just even the rent rates. It's very, very particular to location. Yeah, I can imagine that. Okay, my other question has to do with commercial tenants and how you are protected under the law. Now, I know Serene already said there isn't as much protection as, say, for a regular residential renter. We'll find out why that is right after this. All right, we're talking about negotiating a lease, a commercial lease, which can be difficult for many people if they don't have all the knowledge and expertise. Now, Bowton Law is our on-air legal analyst, and they're kind of helping us out with some of the questions. Uh, Serene Chow is a real estate lawyer with Bowton Law. And one thing I wanted to address as well, Serene, is breaking a lease. And this isn't kind of for the land owners or the business owners, building owners, this is for the business owner who wants to get out of that lease. Is it possible? Right. Sometimes within there, you might have an option to terminate and then you have to give notice. This is more rare, something that you kind of negotiate to build in the lease to begin with. But if you don't have something like that, maybe you can negotiate with the landlord, say, hey, my business isn't doing so well. Maybe there can be a mutual release. Or another option, which we sometimes see, is that the tenant that isn't doing so well, maybe they find somebody else to pick up their business and then they can assign the lease over to somebody else and then they carry on the lease. Okay, because that seems quite tricky. So you can't just say, ah, I'm done. Like if you're a renter, you can just give notice and leave. If you're a commercial leasee, you can't do that. Absolutely. You have to deal with the landlord. You can't just run off. 
Okay, that can make it tricky. I know some people feel like the lease is probably too constricting sometimes. Sometimes it is, but definitely that's why in the very beginning, when you actually look into the key lease terms, you have to be comfortable, at least know exactly what you're signing up for, like how long you're going to be in there, what's the rent that you're paying, so that you can kind of see how your business is going to take the lease and and how your business is going to be run for the next couple of years. Okay, I want to talk about the law here too, because you said this earlier, and I thought it was interesting. You said that residential tenants have more protection under the law than commercial tenants. Is that right? That's right. Why is that? And it's because usually we deal with more sophisticated parties with commercial dealings. So they feel like both parties have the ability to negotiate fairly in the beginning. So that's why there is less protection, but there's also more flexibility for those people that are entering into commercial leases. Because at the end of the day, it's both parties what they agree to. So if there are certain concerns as a tenant, you have certain concerns that you want to bring up. It's very good to bring up at the very beginning so that those key terms are brought to the attention of the landlord. So essentially everybody has a lawyer when it comes to a commercial lease. Yeah, pretty much. And absolutely. if you're a residential tenant, you don't have a lawyer negotiating <laughs> your much. lease with you. Pretty much. And then sometimes it's unique. Some of the concerns I've heard from tenants are, are unique. For an example, as all a lot of people know, when the cattle line was being built. Oh, uh, right. Yes. And then a lot of places were being affected by that. So for an example, if you hear something in the wind that you know some construction or something that's happening nearby, uh, you might want to put it in there where maybe you get the option to terminate if that should come to fruition or uh, another one where they're saying well you know what I have this perfect view and this is what I'm paying for I heard that another person may be building a building in front of it Uh, it might block my view then I want to have the option to leave Hmm. so something that's unique to your uh, to your business should be brought up Um, another one that we also sometimes see is that if they're from a small little uh, complex per se and they say well you know what I want to bring in my restaurant business. And for this complex, I want to be the only one that's serving this type of cuisine. Well, if this is something unique to you, this is something that you want for your business, then you should bring up and negotiate with the landlord and say, well, this is something that I would like and see if you can have that agreed to. Huh. Okay. That's interesting because I've heard that from business owners along West Broadway, uh, which is not far from where I live, but there has been concern, of course, about Subway to UBC, Subway to UBC. And I know that a lot of business owners around there feel like they are in limbo because you know it's coming, could be next year, could be 10 years from now, but it makes it difficult for them to decide what the future of their businesses are. Like, should they be looking now for another location? Should they hang in there? Will they get a lower rent if, you know what I mean? Like there's so many uncertainties. Yes. And so this is some of the things that, um, well, you actually can't help the tenant to give them a timeline because anytime that construction is being built or anything to, to do with that, it's, it's, it's going to be, um, the timeline isn't there. But at least some of the things that they can do when they negotiate lease and say, well, you know what, if this plan is actually put into place, um, can I give you maybe six months notice to move. And this is something that you will have to put out in the front um, to be upfront with the landlord and say, well, this is my concern. I don't know when it's coming in, but then if it does, maybe I can get six months to move my business or to terminate the lease. But it definitely would behoove them to be bringing this up with their landlords now. I would think so. If you're anywhere along that West Broadway (laughs) corridor. Yeah, it's it's on a lot of people's minds. Yeah, I have noticed that as well, because I did talk about it with a couple of businesses in that area, because I said, what's going on? A lot of places were leaving. Yes. This was probably a year or so ago, and nobody was coming in. They said there's too much uncertainty. And now, of course, I think with the TransLink referendum having failed, businesses are moving back in there and opening up. Exactly. But it's still on people's minds that if anything were to be revived, then maybe, you know what, you can go in, but then have that clause in there to protect you so that you can leave uh, if it really does go forward, and then your, your business plans are interrupted, and then you have to leave that way you don't have that repercussion of being stuck in a space where you don't want to be okay so essentially if you are looking to sign a commercial lease you should cover any and every possibility (laughs) pretty much so sometimes in the very beginning the key terms the set of key terms in a lease proposal can be very very far and few so just kind of like oh who i'm renting the rent, uh, how long I'm renting for in the space. But then the thing is, there can be much more to it. If you have details about renovation, if you have concerns about um, what's going to be moving in the area, what's going to be interrupting your business or not being able to move or relocate you, those yeah. things should be brought up as soon as you you negotiate in the beginning. Is it tough for uh, somebody who does have a commercial lease to 
get any anything out of their landlord if they feel they're not being properly looked after if the landlord isn't looking after them what's well, it, it it can be so that's why that's something that you should look deeply into the lease in the beginning so that you know what your responsibilities are under the lease and what the landlord's responsibilities are as well okay yeah because sometimes it's for the tenant to do certain things to do certain repairs and, and the others is not, for the landlord yeah. yes but generally it's a lot of responsibility is on the tenant when it comes to commercial lease okay so Serena you've been great answering questions this wasn't legal advice or anything but that you were great at answering questions for us today uh, for more information if people are looking for more information what should they do actually you can look for uh, myself or for any of the lawyers at Bowton Law on our website um, or just through the CKNW website okay sounds good that is CKNW.com and that is Serene Chow real estate lawyer with Bowton Law that is our on-air legal analyst